Mayo chapter. And so it's it's the you duty created a lot of organizations of, man. of these the chapters to to record and share the history from their own locality. So we got one. It's, of course, we got the Stockton. We got so you do go to door to door to Filipinos and have <laughs> 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 almost, <laughs> really, almost, <laughs> almost. And so we share this, and, and, and you know, so it starts from there. And then I help write the legislation for the state of California to declare October as Filipino American History Month. Oh, that was so, that was you. That was me. Yeah, I like it. Oh, so, everybody, I, round of applause for me. Round of applause for well, the, the funny thing is. Um, I wrote it, and it was authored by Senator Leland Yee. <laughs> you know who how, Senator Leland Yee yeah, is? Yeah, so, how did yeah. that happen? Well, because Senator Leland Yee has been doing, he had been doing lots of legislation for Filipinos, right. for World War II mm -hmm. veterans, mm -hmm. and he was friends with the, our national um, FONS office, the uh, Philippine American National Historical Society. So Uncle Fred Cordova, who <clears throat> founded it with his wife, um, Dorothy Cordova, asked me to, to work with Leland to write it. And so we did it. Um, was passed the state of California because October was chosen because on October 18, 1587, the first recorded landing of Filipinos um, occurred in Morro Bay, California. We have a national historical marker there. Wow. So from that point on till today, that's over 400 years, we've had this continuous history yeah. of, of Filipino presence in the United States and history. When the wow. tropical right. Mexicans were So the U.S. Congress adopted the language that, so it became a national thing. And um, President Obama invited me to, to the White House when the White House first Right. Celebrate Filipino American History Month to, to give a presentation. That's on so it, cool. Know? That's that's really impressive. I All mean, right, so you're a bigger deal than we imagined. <laughs> yeah, and here we go. I'm not just a tournament <laughs> scorekeeper. <laughs> I, we thought that's you we were thought. a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> he's just the MC. <laughs> yeah, he's just the guy who talks about the show. Wow, I love yeah. it. That, yeah. That's really. Oh my goodness. That that speaks volumes right. about you. Yeah, but the history is so important to who we are because. Yeah. Again, no history, no sound. You know, I'm never going to see you the same way again. You know, no. <laughs> I mean, there's no way I can look at this. Oh, he's the guy with the backpack no. and the stick going, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, there's a lot in those tattoos. It, it seems to me then that you're the guy to talk to about having the Filipinos come back up and making their own mark in the society that, that we're living in today. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because it's really hard to get a bunch of Filipinos because. You and I both know there are those Filipinos who are very nose in the air, very, you know, all about, oh, I have to have Gucci or nothing at all. Yeah. yeah and yeah. It gives us all a really yeah. bad name. I mean, yeah. everybody. I have you know, neighbors we, like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we get the stink yeah. eye from these people because, oh, they're Filipinos. You know, yeah. when I was in Hong Kong, uh -huh. I mean, we had a guy, a Chinese guy, turn us away from getting a banana pancake because, you know, and this was at the airport mm -hmm. at six in the morning or seven in the morning. And the guy said, oh, we ran out. How do you do that? Yeah, because you're Filipino. Right. Yeah, you're Filipino. You know, so it's like we do need to establish or, or change the minds of people so mm -hmm. we don't have that stigma of being, oh, they're all this way. Because yeah. even I'm a guilty of that. When I worked at the hotel, and we, I did security at a hotel at the Intercontinental, and Filipinos would come into our, my area, and once they found out I was Filipino, it was like, oh, you bought it. Give me a job! All of a sudden, right? it's like you know, because oh, we're from this. Oh, come a buy in, you know, yeah, get yeah, me in here. I'm like, yeah. no, it doesn't uh, work that, that way. That's, yeah, a, yeah. that's a real stereotype. Yeah, yeah but yeah, that's yeah, what that's it was. So you know, yeah. and, and and I felt bad because I was like, wait a minute, I don't speak Tagalog. You mm -hmm. have to, you know, and then then all of a sudden when they realized I was an American, they were like, oh, never mind. Yeah, 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 yeah but I felt, you know, it's like. Wow, yeah. this is really crazy. And, and those are again vestiges of our, our colonial upbringing. Of course, yeah. Yeah. So we're they they judge people and classify people based on yeah. how much money they make, right. the color of their skin, classism. You yeah. know, yeah. Uh, even in the Mexican culture, who who oh, are yeah. the movie stars, the actresses, right. they uh, light the skin and, ones. You know, and <laughs> no, I've, I've, so I, blue eyes. I don't watch. Yeah. So our whole standard of, of beauty is yeah. based on, yeah. on the on white that, colonial. That. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Because in the Philippines, most of the politicians and whatnot are celebrities right. mm -hmm. or were celebrities or boxers or boxers. <laughs> the governor <laughs> yeah but that's crazy well yeah the, know, the original term blue bloods came from the spanish people yeah. because they're they're so light-skinned and and pale that you could see the veins so yeah, the blue, <laughs> blue blood yeah. got got translated as some sort of you know mm -hmm. status of, of being better royalty kind of thing and right. it came from them from the spanish but i i think it's our generation and the next generations that need to change, that have to change. because we're one or two generations removed from that mentality the right and, and again that's why i think the the filipino martial arts fellowship here in the bay area is so strong since we don't have those 
that colonial mentality no, where no, my style is better yeah. than your style yeah. or, or well, I better, you, know, you know and you know what proved that was our 25th episode when mm-hmm. we had all those different oh, yeah. masters come up they were and no funny. everybody was real cordial I mean there was no egos, no egos. there was no belts they were all just people who were like oh here's what I would do here's what you know mm-hmm. like cool I mean you didn't see anything like that yeah. at all throughout the entirety of that show it's the kind of community yeah. I want yeah. and everybody's just praising everybody and just hey yeah that was yeah. awesome you know, you, yeah. did, you know and that was so much fun you gotta be in the next one <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd love to do something with uh, Grandmaster Harry Green I love that dude thing. that man oh. is when he when he stopped Naive, yeah, and yeah. then got him on the ground and just said, "Hey, look, bam!" <laughs> <laughs> I was struggling. He's, he's, a, really he's a real deal. Struggling. He's a real deal. Oh, no, yeah. dude, real deal. that dude is strong. He's eighty years old. Why oh, not? Strong. I know. Yeah, he couldn't. Get, he couldn't I, get out I, of the grip. My, <laughs> my arm. Was you could see it in his face. <laughs> <laughs> trying to struggle to stab, and all of a sudden I'm on the floor. He makes me look into his eyes before he punches me. I'm like, okay, that's just <laughs> that's just wrong. But well, you know, one of my my oldest students, eighty years old, a man named Dan, and he has a long background in, in Chinese martial arts as well. But I tell all my students, he may not be the physically the most strongest of my students, but he has the strongest chi. Right. And you can feel it. You know, when you're when you're working with him, you can feel that power. Oh. So he's able to compensate his like like yeah. Master Harry yeah. Green, you know, yeah. that physical strength with this this internal energy. Wow. And yeah, because it's he's, very it's very real. It's yeah. very, very oh, yes. real. I know all about that. I've been yeah. knocked over by those guys. Yeah. Not fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not yeah. fun at all. <laughs> it's like hitting a brick wall. <laughs> ben came with me to Cebu this past March, and mm-hmm. we did this um, canyon hike in um, Cebu. Uh-huh. It's like a four-hour hike. And he was, turns out he was the oldest person to ever do that hike. Through the canyons, <laughs> jumping off waterfalls and... Dude, I would Dude, be surprised if an eighty-year-old man yeah. on a canyon hike. <laughs> After what were you thinking? <laughs> you know, we're we're about an hour in there. I'm thinking, shit, his wife is gonna kill him. <laughs> <laughs> he has a heart attack or anything. But I some parts even <laughs> last an hour. <laughs> but he, he he was a trooper. You'll see. Dude, pictures, I think I'm pictures. good for about twenty minutes. <laughs> the, I don't. Yeah. You Those canyons are. Right. But he didn't know, do yeah. he didn't do some of the big jumps like the fifty right. foot. The last fifty foot jump off the waterfall. I wouldn't do a fifty no. foot jump off the waterfall. But he he did pretty much the whole hike. That's and crazy. by the end of the hike, the word had gone around <laughs> that there's this 85 year old, 90 year old man on the hike. <laughs> he starts getting older and older. At the, yeah, exactly. Like at the end, the owner of the, the, the uh, tour company met oh, him at the uh, end, was taking pictures. I said, Ben, next time you come here, they're going to have a statue. <laughs> because he's so famous. He was that famous that day because his age kept on getting older and older and older. <laughs> this 200 year old man just did that hike. <laughs> Without a cane. <laughs> but again, I think it, 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 it's a testament to, to training. <coughs> right. yeah, Seriously yeah, yeah. training your That's whole awesome. life and having a, a, a healthy lifestyle. Well, I want to make an association then if we're talking about history and how this man, this 80-year-old man doing this hike, all of a sudden by the end of the hike, he became something He was more. a legend. He was a legend. <laughs> how much of that do you think you have to dispel in people's uh, minds and even in, in the way that you give them information? To see beyond that and see what the actual history is because there's a lot of stuff like you said it's written by the victors there's a lot mm-hmm. of misinformation mm-hmm. going around even amongst the oh, yeah. people that you're trying to teach yeah. yeah how do you how do you how do you get them to see beyond that it, it's like what's going on in society today uh-huh. you have to t- keep on repeating the same story the true story the real story over, and that's really hard to do, again. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Social media right now, it's yeah. who's ever first. It's not about yeah. whether you're right or wrong or yeah. you did the research. It's, oh, I said it first. Yeah. And people believe it. People will believe anything. <clears throat> yeah. But you, you, you got to be able to back it up with some kind of credentials as well. And that's the sad uh, part. The internet never does that. The credential no. part, yeah. No. They don't, they don't no. back anything up. They say, they just put it out and say, this yeah. is God's law yeah. right yeah. here. This yeah. is the truth. This yeah. Is it. It's it. But we, we got to do it. We <laughs> talked about how can Filipinos uplift themselves. I think it's educating themselves first and foremost yeah. about themselves, mm-hmm. and then using that knowledge to help the community, help other Filipinos. And not this is this is if, you, if you want to learn some real yeah. history, talk to this man, reach out to him. We're going to put links and everything to him in in the video because this is important. If you now, want to carry, I want you forward. to know that at this part of the video, I'm going to have the Filipino. Um, National anthem playing. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We're gonna do a close up. We're gonna jump off into the. Da, 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 da. I, I still can't sing that song. I believe it cannot. That's why I only hummed a few yeah. bars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. Wow. You know, this was a really cool day. Yeah. I, I did not know we were gonna get this kind of information. 
this, this, this is degree really cool. of knowledge. I know we're already in the hour. Yeah, we're, we're, past, the we're past the hour. We're past the hour. All right, so let's do this rather than because we're gonna have to have you come back another. Day. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm definitely. I'm not going anywhere. No, you guys know I, where I live. I definitely think the next time we come here, we're gonna have a bit more of a we specific do more hands -on question. Stuff. Yeah, <coughs> he wants you to do get him somebody to come and do tattoos on his ass. Oh, oh. I was about to say. Uh, <laughs> he wants I, a I traditional. I my skin. He wants a, he wants a traditional. To do that on camera. <laughs> so how did you get? Uh, was yours done with the gun, or did you do the traditional? Mine tapping, were done the with a combination jabbing? of of the tattoo gun uh -huh. as well as the tapping. Really. So. How long is that process? It's hard to say because I have probably 40 hours worth of tattooing on my body. Jeez. 40 so, hours a week. <laughs> but but not all done at the same time. Oh, of course. But of course. In, different, <laughs> no, in different stages. I think the longest, the longest stretch I did was maybe eight hours. Eight hours. I was going to say but, five. Wow. Eight but hours. eight hours. So eight the first hours. hour, it, it's okay. Second hour, it's such a hurt. Third hour, it is... Yeah. Fourth hour, you're just trying to find your happy place. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you try to try to stay there for until it's done. So the whole thing about endorphins, that's that's all crap. <laughs> no, it, 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 it worked. Well, the um the last time I or one of the times I I, I was getting tapped on my leg, oh. we we're at our inside like that. It's like that. In the back of my calf. And oh. I realize there's a lot of nerves back yeah, there. Yeah, 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 but yeah, I'm yeah. laying on the floor of our tattoo place uh -huh. in um in um, Southern California. It's called yeah. Spiritual Journey. <laughs> and we specifically do Filipino and and even um, Mexican tattoos. There, it's, it's cultural tattoos. See, I, I want that. I want to get. And you're laying on the on the on the mat, on, a baniga on the floor, uh -huh. right. and all along the baseboards are pictures of our ancestors. You know, oh, like, like those guys you, up there. They're trying yeah, to keep yeah. you motivated. <laughs> yeah. So I'm laying there, and I'm in, I'm, I'm in a shitload of pain, and I'm thinking, <laughs> if these guys can do it, right. I can do it. How great. Right. So the tattoos, you don't just go to a tattoo parlor and say, I want a Filipino tattoo yeah. or a no, Mexican. No, no. You, you got you to gotta do your research, right? yeah. like yeah. I did with my Ipercar. All right, there. folks, just so you know, because we're talking about tattoos, can you take your shirt off, please? Oh, no. Come on. Really no, dude, good. this is new. Dude, now I'm curious because 40 hours. <laughs> we got to <laughs> see. He has legs, too, though. It's not no, just we don't have yeah. to look at his yeah. legs. Or my back. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy because we're going to zoom in on this. All right. No, come the big oh. reveal. The big oh, reveal. Oh my goodness! So. Now, what are the stories of these people? I mean, so these are supposed to tell man, stories. It's starting right? to get hard. <laughs> these these He's talking about his nipples, folks. He's talking about his nipples because <laughs> it's cold. Let's put that in context before we get flagged. <laughs> so, of course, it, it tells a story, and, right. and, and the tattoos between the different tribes are all different. Okay. Yeah. the same but different. Right. So, think of it as like. Um, um, a football game. The Raiders have their 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 uniforms. Right. The Chargers have their uniforms. Same thing with the different tribes in the Philippines. Because right. when you're fighting in the jungles, we all look the same. Right. Right. Is this Alabata? This is um. We call it Baybayan. 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 So this is Baybayan. This is my last name. Okay. Spelt in um, Baybayan. All right. Right. So the plants then represent the this, the this indigenous is, plant life in the area you were. You well, these. Believe it or not, these aren't plants. This is a centipede. Oh, really? Centipede is a protective um, tattoo. So it protects the, the warrior from, from harm in battle, oh. from sickness or disease. But it also represents all the legs of the war party fighting for one cause. Because you guys go, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. And also represents your, your, your commitment to community. You're, you're working together as a community. You know, That's the, the whole Bionian spirit. Yeah. And this is, is a scorpion. So it's a, a, one version of scorpion, this is another version of a scorpion. So a scorpion was, is a traditional <laughs> Filipino warrior tattoo because in spite of its small size, uh -huh. it is fast, Lethal. it is <laughs> deadly, right. and it's strong. Yeah. So only the warriors were allowed the, the tattoo. This so, one was actually tattooed on with a um, lemon tree thorn. Oh, wow. Um, wow. This figure in the middle is a, a Ling Lingo. It's another version of it up here. Ling Lingo is the... It's a fertility symbol, but it's also a um, good luck symbol oh, yeah, as well. Oh, yeah, because it has a woman on the side, doesn't it? Well, no, it's more like the womb, the womb of the woman. Okay. So giving, giving birth, birth but give, yeah, not yeah. only giving birth as in a baby, but giving birth to thoughts, ideas, um, projects, the arts. Wow, that is some right? really rich... And these, uh, <laughs> these guys here are the bulul. So there's a bulul over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a bulul here. The bulul is the rice god or the rice deity for the, for the Cordillera people. Because yeah, rice is what? Life. Life, yeah. right. So there are seven ceremonies around the Bulul wow. during the rice Wait, season. From the planting, From the planting to the growing to the harvesting to the, 
to the um, grain storage. Yeah, because the ancient Japanese they had the seven kami of the of the uh, again all these connections, yeah, all these connections, the seven gods, right? Of rice. All the connections. Um, huh. The the goals here, sign of um, direction and hope, because when the Filipinos were out in the ocean in their in their bancas and right. they can't see land, right? They don't know where they're going or how to get to safety. At the at at dusk, they look in the sky and right. they see these gulls. The gulls always flew to land, right, for the night. So all they have to do is follow, follow the gulls, give them direction, and, and give them hope that wow. they're going to be <laughs> safe. Get it? So we got that over my uh, no, 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 no. I got like, yeah, 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 to put yeah. on his shirt because I'm getting cold just looking at <laughs> so, him. <laughs> so I mean, we can spend an hour. Gold. We can spend hours. Yeah, that's that's what talking I'm about, yeah. about all the. So time. next time we come, get it, get the old lady with the backwards cigarette to do a nice shirt <laughs> <laughs> to get the tattoo. Eight hours. We will see. We'll we're gonna see. have an eight-hour show, folks. Yeah. Uh, we will see what we're gonna do next show. Well, yeah, but you know, I mean, I, when, I, when when we were coming here, I was telling Naeem that. Yeah. There would be these old lady who smoked cigarettes backwards. The, yeah, the, 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 the hand rolled right. cigars. Yeah. See, that was true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 I, I believe case. you. Because even even in, in my culture, there's still yeah. there's still places in small towns where they have uh, female tattoo artists that, that do uh, stuff like that. So yeah, you're you're probably referencing <coughs> Wang Od, who's um, in Buscalan, Kalinga, mm -hmm. and she's around 100 years old. Yeah, because right? I remember yeah. there's yeah they they did a thing on her. Yeah. Um, Somewhere yeah. where they're she, she she accepts the like yeah our so I belong event. to another group called Tatak ng Apat na Alon, which means Mark of the Four Had Waves. No idea how to pronounce that. Say it again. Tatak ng Apat na Alon, which Never translates to a uh, Mark of Four Waves. So uh -huh. our members are reviving the traditional Filipino tattoos. Awesome. Okay. Right. Awesome. And so the, again, you have to earn the tattoos, and the tattoos all have meaning. So there's now, a whole question. How do you earn the tattoos? Yes. Because... Okay. So. <laughs> Philippines, the warriors earn their tattoo by taking heads, right? <laughs> by fighting, yeah. by fighting um, um, tribal wars right. or against their enemy. Um, but here in America, I cannot literally <laughs> take your head. I cannot take your head. Right. But we interpret that as taking heads to impart knowledge. So I, I took your head today. I took your head today. Right. Two more. Today. Three more. Yeah. And however and many watch. Yeah. So the more heads you take, the more knowledge you, you impart, the more you're you're entitled to to tattoo, dude. You need another forty hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I still got some. I still got some. He yeah, got some skin. skin. Yeah, you still got some skin to go a bit there. A little bit more on the size of my back, <laughs> my other leg. Wow. Yeah, but, that's crazy. So, Thank you for showing that. that was yeah, really yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. That was. I thought that would be a treat for everybody because you know we're talking about it. We had to at least show. Dude, it. you just wanted to see him topless. I yeah. wanted to see how hard his uh -huh. nipples got. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the way he was looking. Yeah, I know. That's why. I'm like, hey, how are you doing? Hey, I try to keep my eyes to his face. Yeah. I tried. I tried. But that's no, awesome. that was cool. I thought there were plants. It turned out to be animals. But you know, like, to me, the martial arts, the Filipino right. martial arts and the tattoos complement each other. Right. Yeah, because the that. martial arts is a spiritual manifestation of our of right. our of our arts, your lineage, as yeah. are our tattoos right no because right? we are only allowed the tattoos if we were a warrior since you're the the historian guy clarify for me um the nickling and filipino martial arts <laughs> no connection good see no connection there was always a story that yeah. our dancing was part of the well yes some of our dances yes but the nickling specifically no it the nickling is is a dance based on on the bamboo traps in the rice fields trying to catch the a, a bird. So that's what it was. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So though, there was these. And that's why I wanted to bring that. Right. Because, you know. But we have some other dances that use sticks, right? Like the maglala dick, um, as well as other dances like the pandango so ila, right, where you where you see the yeah. dance of the lights, the, the, yeah. the knife, yeah. where you see that the hand movements right. that are just you know blocks and parries. Okay, so there was some truth to what you there told is. me. There is. You just didn't do enough history. Yeah. Yeah. Not no, there that's is. why. And there is. Hey, <laughs> but not There's specifically. But not specifically to Ninkling. Yeah. Okay. Just because it's bamboo just doesn't mean yeah. every piece of bamboo is a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's a, those are that's way what too I was long. Led to believe. <laughs> those, are, those are way too long and way too big yeah. to use as a weapon. That's what I was led to believe. Oh, okay. So now you're putting but that's it on somebody right. else. No, and okay. that's why. Does I, it make I, sense though? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I get it. I mean, I knew that the lights were. I knew yeah. what that yeah, was yeah, with the yeah. candle things. Yeah. But I thought since that was all associated, it was yeah. technically. Yeah. Yeah. So they had the, the the I think forget the name of the bird, but the bird would try to avoid getting trapped right. with the bamboo trap by some sort of crane. Yeah. yeah. By doing this. 
And that's where they get the chicken feet going. Yeah. yeah. Do, 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 do. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Okay. Okay. So let's no. do this. Um, can okay. we do something in the backyard with you uh, with the butter? Or, or we'll do it here. We'll All do right, it. folks. We'll be right back for yes. a, a quick break. Some of the We're gonna set up stuff. the room. We're gonna make sure we're gonna give Nain enough room to like duck and cover it in case. <laughs> so we'll be right back. I think it works. Right, set this up uh, well, now. Uh, before we get to the actual physical stuff, let's yeah. let's um, have him do a shameless plug on his weapons that he actually yes. creates himself. Yes, he carves people. He carves like a champ. He stays out here in the dead of night. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. So um, my brother and I have a company called Island Warriors Fighting Sticks. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we we carve. Actually, I import Calcutta bamboo directly from a grower in Calcutta, India. And Calcutta bamboo is a form of bamboo that is completely solid. Oh, Almost completely okay. solid. Unlike regular bamboo that, if you hit it, it's going to crack. Right, right. right. Yeah. And it's, bamboo is it's harder than oak. Right. Not only that, but it tapers. Whereas rattan, yeah. not much of a taper. Nope. Not much of a taper. So it's, it's more dense. So it has a more solid feel to it. And um, what we decided to do is we wanted to carve sticks that had our traditional Filipino tattoo patterns on it okay. uh, for several reasons. One is to actually educate people about the tattoos. So when they get a so stick... So you're taking more heads again. Exactly. So when they buy a <laughs> stick, I send them a, a printout that explains what all the tattoo patterns right. are on their stick. Yeah, let's hold this up a little bit because I can zoom in on that. Yeah. Uh, now, this one that looks like a snake, is that actually just a snake then? You are, you are so good. Yeah. Dude. Oh, it's called an ahas. 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 So the, the snake, there's there's two versions of snake on here. This is a, another version of snake, which is a scale. Oh, it's just the scales, right? The scales is a turtle. Right. And so the snake or the ahas is also a warrior um, symbol because they are strong, mm -hmm. they are stealthy, and they are protectors. So you want snakes in your right. in your garden and your rice terraces because they they eat the the rodents that would mm -hmm. destroy your crops. Um, again, here is a scorpion, and we talked about that earlier. And this is the palai. You know what palai is? No. Palai is a, is a new sprouting rice. Oh, okay. okay. New life, new beginnings. Oh. Um, so this is for one of my students who has been training is is creating new life with his art. Oh, that's crazy. Right. And beautiful. <clears throat> This one here is going to um, uh, a friend of mine who owns a, a Filipino restaurant, and he's Ilocano, so <laughs> I put the Cordillera Mountains here on the top. Oh, how cool. And this is before they're stained. The and then oh, I was the gonna centipede, ask you, stained, okay. Centipede, and this is the mata, the eyes, the all-seeing mm -hmm. eyes. And then this is his, his name here. Uh, who did, who did, and you do all of this yes. work yourself? I do it all myself. And this is the ocean, because the Ilocanos from the mountains mm -hmm. to the oceans. Right. Oh, I see. <laughs> how long does it take you? Journey. <laughs> how long does it take you to do that? Just that um, section. Well, on first, you. I have to I have to conceptualize. I, I interview, and I want to know about the, the person buying the stick. And then uh, once I know about their background and their history and their family, then I conceptualize a story. Right. And then from the story, I, I I trace it on a paper, just my ideas, and then I will. Draw it on a stick with uh, pencils, and you might see some pencil right. marker there, and then I'll carve it with my Dremel tool. That's wow. cool. So each, and then I'll, I'll put <coughs> two coats of, um, of Kona stain on it. So I think each stick takes maybe two hours. Wow, that's One and a half, two hours. What happens uh, when you make a mistake? You start over? Yeah. <laughs> or I'll cut up the stick. I'll cut up the stick and I'll sure. make I'll I make um, um, doodle doodles yeah, with it yeah. or okay. other things yeah. with it. Yeah. That's or I'll, I'll sell it to the Serrata folks who want you know, shorty shit. <laughs> like like, um, like Rob, Grandmaster Robert Castro has a shorter stick. Yeah. Like, but they they love the shorter sticks. Right, right, they right. love the shorter sticks. So that's, that's what I do. Funny. I make doodle doodle. So right now I got a. Because you got what twenty eight. These are twenty eights, right? Okay. So I have a, a promotion for the holiday. If you buy a pair of sticks. You get a free little tool. Ah! Uh, and then, then, we one one the then we started carving um, wow. uh, training knives also out of uh, pressed bamboo. Oh, wow, beautiful. folks, look at this. Yeah. I'm going to zoom in on that. So these are based on traditional Filipino blades. He's and got a Scorpio on here or centipede. Yep, you the got it. Yeah. Star. Yep, the side. That's so, cool. So we, we, trade, we, we carve these as well. Carve these as well. Um, but I, I'm a big collector of Filipino weapons so you can see some on the wall here and this yes. i got more in the house and i'm going to zoom in on that in a little while so yeah. don't worry we'll yeah, we're going to take some extra stuff yeah but um 
Um, again, it's, it, it, it imparts the, the warrior spirit of our ancestors to the user. And, and, and folks, just so you know, these carvings here, it actually makes for a great grip. It does. I mean, like you can actually feel that on there. Yeah. So I love that. Yeah, when you get blood on your sticks, it, it's easier to it's hold. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No. You're the, you're the, yeah, the, I know. You're the, you're the, you're the right now. But, but it's like important that. to know, <laughs> that's why uh, most of Filipino weapons have a hook. Right. On, on the butt of their of their handles because so the they know that when you get blood on your right. handle of your knife yeah. or your blade, it's like it's like oil. Mm -hmm. Right. And those of us who um, butchered goats and pigs in our lives, we know that. I mean, I've never stabbed a human, but I know what blood feels like on yeah. the handle of a knife. That's lead, so <laughs> I know what it feels like. <laughs> so we. So that's why the Filipinos were so smart. So you can see their weapons, they all have yeah, a hook on them. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the distinctions of a Filipino handle. Yeah, I love that. So I incorporated it into these. So I'm going to yank something off the wall here because these are just so cool not to. Um, folks, this is a dismantled man cave. <laughs> it's an Ifugao spear. It's called a Falfeg um, style of spear. But yeah. basically, it goes in only one direction. <laughs> yeah, you can see the hooks. <laughs> And this so is, what, you just toss it out the <laughs> Well, they actually take these, the they, don't, they don't throw them, they're just for taking them down. Okay. Okay. Medium range. Uh -huh. This one here was interesting because it was actually brought back by a buffalo soldier who fought in the Philippine-American War. Oh, is it? A, a man named John Anderson, first lieutenant um, infantry, U.S. 